All right, guys, welcome back to another Mob Bros video. We finally got our hands on a Nexus Pro. Our Walmart was out for a little bit and we didn't feel like driving to the other ones. The other ones were also out. They finally restocked ours. I picked one up today so we could do a couple videos on it, maybe design a kit for it. We're not super sure yet. We haven't opened it up at all. Um, so yeah, this is gonna be our first impressions of the blaster and also first impressions of the internal. Uh, so for starters, it's another Retaliator clone. Retala clone. <laughs> Retala clone that Tucker dislikes since the market is so flooded with so many of them. Uh, but yeah, this is the $50 exclusive Walmart Blaster, which is pretty cool for getting 150 FPS out of the box. Uh, we turned it off camera and it was getting like 140s, 150s. So the we don't- The lowest was 120, went up to what, 160, think, 180? No, I was getting a bunch of 150s. I think the lowest one I got was a 129. Yeah. And that was, I forget what dart it was. I think it might have just been an ACC. Uh, we already have a review up on our channel of the darts, so we're not going to be talking about that at all in this video. Just be focusing on the blaster. It will work with all the variety of darts. We don't have we we don't have like AccuFacture waffles just because we all run brass breeches, and so we never saw those as like an actual dart option for us. But from all the ones that we have here of the ACCs and workers, they've been working well. We've also been testing with FBJs. Uh, it's been great been feeding well firing well it's pretty accurate out of the box even without any like zero scar that sort of thing it just has this attachable muzzle brake which is a, a cool aesthetic <laughs> but not really necessary I honestly like that this comes off because then you can just put this in and I think it looks better without that so that's my complaint is that you don't need this and it looks better in my opinion without it but whatever I would have preferred if it came with some accuracy type thing, but with the included darts, the included darts are already superb without a scar or anything, so I guess it makes sense. Uh, talking about buffer tube stock, this one is all right. It's a little short, personally, and like that, I, I personally even like like short stocks. It's too short. <laughs> it's I would like already, to at least yeah. another three adjustments out, just have an option. I personally would to do uh, two. For a child, having it fully collapsed is probably all right, and the spring is light enough to where they're probably going to be just fine with it. Uh, additionally, having the <laughs> having the locks that prevent you from depriming it and like double priming it is a little bit of a pain, since why? <laughs> it's just annoying that I can't do that. Since I can do that with any other blast, any other blaster that's actually like made for the hobbyist. Again, I see a lot of comments where these are all like, Oh, they're made for the hobbyists. They're made for modding. None of the Dark Zone Pro Blasters are made for modding. Let's get that out there. They're, they're made for people who don't mod. They're made for people who don't mod, 100%. So, as much as you can change out the spring and whatnot, it's, it's not modding. kind of not really made for modders. Yeah. But it is made for people who want to play a high FPS. Comes with a safety, which is an alright one. Uh, in order to put it on safe, you have to like have your offhand do it which feels a little weird i like the cedas better i'm going to be drawing in a lot of comparisons to the cedar because the cedar is my personal favorite retaliator clone and i definitely think the cedar for the 15 dollars more that you can get it on sale on evike for the takedown and all that i would definitely much rather buy the yeah. cedar jacob and i were talking about this earlier you guys may know I'm a bit more of a long shot fan than I am a Retaliator fan or a Cita fan. Nothing against the Cita. I personally think it's pretty cool with its takedown functionality and its modularity. And I would not pay $50 for this personally. I would recommend this to people who are new to the hobby and want to shoot at the competitive performance that other people have. But would I buy this or buy this for someone else? No, I would buy the Mesita because it's a bit simpler with the takedown to get inside if there's a, a problem you need to get to immediately. I also like the modularity a bit more. I can't say anything about this yet because we haven't opened it, obviously. But we have a kit designed for the Cita and it boosts the FPS. This one's pretty good. Again, can't really say too much about its modularity. Can't shit on it too much because we just don't know. If if this existed when Dart Wars was still around, yes. and when Dart Wars had their day play limit of 150, I think this would be great. Honestly, I think this could have made it so Dart Wars didn't drop their FPS limit down to 130 on mm -hmm. day play, because you would just have so many kids that would come in with this, 
and it would be superb. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> even the battlefields it would, it wouldn't Day just be us honest. two out there. They play with honestly. Long shots. They play with honestly, kind of more fun. <laughs> yeah, because everyone was out there with like mm, stock, jolts. stock blasters or rival. Yeah. And it just kind of got a pain because everyone, <laughs> you it honestly couldn't run rival because everyone else was just hoarding all the rival rounds. Nerf just getting. But back to the point, would I spend another $15 to get a CETA, something that I don't necessarily want or need? Yes, 100% over this for the takedown and for ergonomics. I don't love the stock and the stock on the CETA is just a little bit more comfortable because it goes out just a little bit further. Um, yeah, I... I'm sure I'll have other reasons once we open it, but right now those are my main comparisons from this to the CETA. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it has the standard slack that the majority of retaliators do. This one has even more because it's a pusher breach that allows for full-length starts. But I'll tell you, once you use blasters that don't have that slack to them and then you go back to this, it's, uh, it's gross. Absolutely disgusting. Another thing that both Tucker and I dislike is that it has, when you have the half length adapter, it has the dual levers. It's uh, something that we both share complaints for with the X Zeus. This is Tucker's X Zeus, and it's usually why he runs Talons in his is because he doesn't want to have to fit around with the double magazine release. So even though you can run Talons in this adapter, Tucker's probably just gonna end up using his Talon adapter because off camera he's already said that it's much better overall. It also looks better in my opinion. True, it does look a little bit better. Uh, besides that, the handles are both comfy. You don't need that rubberized grip thing in my opinion. They're fine. They're not anything to complain about. I dislike that it has locks, but I can understand that if it's part of the target audience is children, that may like yeah, they may open that and put their finger in there and then shoot, pull the trigger and be stupid like that but <laughs> we'll just crush their their index uh the seal is pretty decent it's not perfect uh but that's fine that may be an issue with just the pusher o-ring or the plunder tube or this <laughs> or any of the o-rings involved in this telescoping part i see two here and there's probably two more at the back a weird lock there. Oh, that's probably the trigger lock. Yeah, it's got that telescoping action, which we don't like. Uh, good thing, metal barrel. Everyone's already talked about that. Uh, trying not to like, trying to go quickly over everything that other people have talked about. I think there's the so metal barrel's cool. There's so many reviews out there that we were already like behind on the game, so we're trying not to focus on everything. This is nice. I love these mags. I wish this was a 15 one. I also wish it was reversible, like a katana. I wish it was an 18. An 18? In the breach. This jam door, when you have a mag in, honestly doesn't shit. doesn't really get to, doesn't really let you see much. No, because there's just so much blocking. There's the lips of the mag, and then there's the there's black the mag, push, there's black the priming bar. Priming bar, whatever we're gonna call it. Uh, you can like barely see when you have a dart there. Yeah, I, I, the but, only reason I could tell earlier is when we were using FEJs and the blue was contrasting with orange. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be it for our initial impressions of the assets, and we're gonna go take this bad boy apart and look at mob potential and the locks. Yeah. So we'll be back. All right, guys, we're back to closing statements now that we've looked at the internals, and it definitely seems like a blaster that we would like to try and make a kit for. It's gonna be a kit that's a little bit more intensive just because of all the internal parts of the shell that you would have to make room for for the larger plunder tube but hopefully we will uh, be coming back to you guys with another video where we show how to remove the slack from the prime and also we're going to try and keep it feeding full lengths because why not okay so as a conclusion uh, it's definitely a nice blaster but uh we were more excited for the darts than actually the blaster to be released. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I don't really know what else to say. Make sure you guys check out all of our links in the description, such as our Facebook, Patreon, and our Etsy. And hopefully, uh, if we can get it all figured out, we'll actually have a kit for this blaster. But yeah, hope you guys liked this video. Sorry, we were a little bit behind with the getting the review out for the Nexus Pro. We just got unlucky with our Walmarts not having them in store. But yeah. See you.